Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's been a long wait, or at least a longer one, but it's time for our third, fourth place decider match between Myth Trust, hailing from Thailand, and Arj Esports, of course, from Malaysia. This is the Asia, this is your third place decider, and the loser gets zilch. There's only prizes for first, second, and third, and to make matters even more intense, it's a best out of one. It's going to be a tough game. We'll take a quick look at the brackets for the playoffs, just so we know where we are. We already had our semifinals. Those were both best out of one. LGD took down Myth convincingly. MUFC took down Arj convincingly. So those two teams who already played at the group stages will be rematching later today in a best out of three. For, uh, vying for that first place, which will have $15,000 for whoever can claim it. Uh, as for the third, fourth place match, Myth Trust and Arms, they played earlier in the group stages, and it was actually a match that Myth Trust took. I think some people would expect Arms to be the favorites, but Myth Trust got the edge the last time around. Anyway, I'm LD, and I'm joined here today by Team Liquid's Bulba. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Been waiting. Hi, hi. Hi. HY. Oh, no. I'm having a connection problem. Is that just me? No, it's gone. Okay. Okay. Making me so Really, like, early respect ban, actually, by Orange. They banned the Naga, so both teams, LGD and Orange, kind of respect Lakel's Naga, I guess. Yeah, Lakel's really, he really likes that Naga. It's, uh, I think I think it's fair to call it a signature hero, uh, more so than anything else. Now, he's played he's played a lot of other hard carries. We've seen him on Anti-Mage, and I think I've seen him on Void before, but, yeah, the Naga really suits Myth Trust, because it's probably, it's probably the safest split-pushing carry. You know, you can push, if you get into trouble, you just saw him and TP out, and... That's what Myth Trust like to do, but it's not going to be there. Yeah, so, and they also ban the Barret, obviously, in the mag. And then the TA ban, I think. I know that even though they don't have Mushi, KYXY is kind of a popular TA player. They actually do play the same kind of roles, so. Yeah, they do. That's why it's awkward to some extent when, like, for example, when, when Ice 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 was not playing with the team and KYXY was filling in for him, KYXY actually got forced into the offlane role, but... Although most people would say that Mushi's the better player than KYXY, they do play a similar role, so it's a natural sort of replacement for him. So in that sense, it kind of works. What do we think as far as the draft goes? Orange, they really value Extinct's Rubik. At least I think it'll be an Extinct Rubik. They almost always run it as a support, and they first pick it. What is this up to? What are they up to with this? They love Rubik, actually. I think Rubik is still one of the best support heroes in the game. He just has so much... He can do, he can do anything. So I, I know, I think the game versus um, MVSC as well, Orange had Rubik, so... Night Stalker, Luna, uh, Myth is going for a totally different kind of lineup. Yeah. They're going for the more LGD and kind of LGD lineup with the common... Yeah, the Death Ball. Yeah. Well, let's see how they play it, though, because we saw last game, LGD China... Uh, or maybe I'm getting the T's mixed up, but the last time we saw the LGD China in general, like, they have much different timings from, you know, LGD International. So it's the same picks, but there's a lot of ways to play them, and... I'm curious how how myth how aggressive they'll be because as a team, myth isn't normally that aggressive. They're more just about you know getting small advantages and then building off of them slowly. Yeah, exactly. So I think if they do, uh, it'll be depending on orange and orange is based on what. Actually, I have no idea what. It's they might since that is a night stalker, they might go for the beastmaster. Beastmaster is kind of like a good counter to night stalker. It could be a co-op like, mid. Uh, we've seen when Mushi played in in G one. I don't know if they'll do it with Mushi not being here, but he killed Ferrari. I think first blooded him two games uh, as a co-op first Night Stalker mid. And again, it's Mushi, but it's something KYXY does play. Yeah, I mean, Co-op is a really strong hero in lane versus uh, uh, Night Stalker, but throughout the game, I think Night Stalker's both heroes actually have mobility. So the thing is, Night Stalker is kind of like an annoyance to just play with versus in the night, and he has good synergy with. Luna, just because Luna needs kind of a tanky hero in the front, and Night Stalker fulfills that. So, oh, the early Dragon Knight and Enigma pick. This must maybe this is why they wanted the Rubik, just to ensure that black hole can't be stolen. Obviously, he's a versatile hero anyway. But hey, if you know you want to pick Enigma later, and it's not something Myth Trust at least they, it's not something they prioritize. So they get it now, and then they go for the Venge, like, a little bit of an Aura stack here, and also potentially the late game counter to that black hole. Yep. And I, uh, Extinct loves playing the kind of the jungle kind of heroes. He loves both Enigma and Chen. So they are going for the Enigma. And Enigma with the BKB late game is really strong and annoying to play versus just because he's kind of just like this end game scenario where he just he's always going to get his ultimate off, except they have Avenge. So 
I don't know if it was kind of I don't I don't think the thing about Enigma is he does he's not just there for his be ultimate he's obviously there just to push he's really a really good pusher oh yeah and they have Dragon Knight as well so I don't know for now if it's not going to be a mid Dragon Knight or a safe lane farming Dragon Knight both are possibilities possible probably going to be a mid Dragon Knight and and one weakness of Myth you mentioned pushing they have the Enigma who sh probably can get the fast mech unless Myth do an offensive tri lane and try to limit him but they don't really have the heroes to have a strong offensive tri lane they don't have really any anti-push wave of terror is okay but luna and night stalker can't stop pushes as good as they can be at pushing they can't do much against it i'm a little concerned for myth right now and we see a lot of the spammers the offliners who can shut down pushes being banned out beastmaster and windrunner for orange yep yeah. i think uh orange like so they ban the beast like uh, like like i said earlier it's a good hero versus night stalker and they possibly are gonna. Uh, actually, what, what am I saying? They're they're. Okay, I'm confused on that. So they ban the beast, so they don't want Myth to get that kind of Venge beast aura with the Luna going on. Venge beast Luna is like what three really strong auras that scale throughout the game. Yeah. So they don't want to get that kind of scenario. And beating that late game is really really. Yeah, like, that that aura really stack is deadly, and it, it turns Luna from you know a pretty good carry into a extremely potent one. Uh, any any carry with that R stack is going to be scary. Uh, supports also being bad out here. The Shadow Demon, uh, a decent. He's a really strong laning support, and that's something Myth don't have. Venge not a good laner. She's obviously a great ganker, a great mid game hero, but the laning stage for Myth, it's looking a little bit weak. They got to find maybe a twin headed dragon might be what they have their eyes on. That would fill their need for anti push, uh, as well as give them you know just some just a decent laning stage. Yeah, like the thing about um, Shadow Demon is he's like you said he's a really he's just a support like he's probably the support that scales best into the late game because his spells are never gonna get like useless because he has that illusion spell that illusion spell is really like, one of the best spells in the game I think disrupt like you can be in every scenario it's just so useful and the purge like you said is really strong versus BKB so every time I see a hard carry team versus a hard carry team I always think the team with the Shadow Demon. As right. a support, is has the advantage just because he can make their carry make two own illusions of himself. And a, a hero like Luna that just goes the butterfly route, those illusions are going to be doing a lot of damage, especially if there's a soul catcher on him. So, yeah, let's, strong ban there. Let's see how Orange finish off this draft. They've got a little bit of everything. They've got a jungler, but most likely, probably it'll be Extinct who plays that, which would put I think Ice onto the Rubik. Extinct normally is the jungler for this team. Uh, although they banned out Chen, uh, maybe Myth was thinking it would be a laning enigma, which we've seen occasionally, but has kind of fallen out of favor. And, well, the next pick's underway. It's a very slow and deliberate draft. Some of the games earlier, the teams are just, the picks were just coming out fast and furious. Yeah. And, let's track, man. Let's track pick. So, I don't know, it, it's probably, it might be an offlane enigma, or kind of a, like a solo kind of enigma. Uh, I don't know yet. Just because it has to be depending on the last pick. So, okay. if they do jungle that, that's going to have to be a farming lush track. So. And I know that Orange actually loves the farming lush track, so keep that in mind. I know that Yamata loved playing that farming lush track throughout TI2. Yeah, so and right now, um, a Kotal pick actually by Myth. So they're going for this Venge, Venge Kotal kind of scenario, and they need a they need an off laning here right now. Possibly going to be a Darkseer, maybe might be even a Bounty Hunter. I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities right now, even a Wind Runner. But they're most likely going to be going for the safe route, unless they want an aggressive tri lane, which is possible with the Venge Kotal and Luna aggressive tri lane. Orange right now is going to pick. They don't have any range DPS. Till this Dragon Knight gets his, obviously he has his ultimate, but he's if they rely on him mostly for the DPS, he needs to get a lot of farm to outcarry this Luna. So, okay, Orange actually picks up the Darkseer. So they love this Darkseer as well. Uh, you've, I think um, WW is going to be playing that. He actually played the offlane previously. So that's going to be a farming less track right now. Kodal is going to be most likely supporting... So um, obviously going to be supporting. So they're going to be playing. Both teams are probably going to be playing a defensive tri lane. The thing about this Kotal pick is that it stops Orange from really pushing early, 
Orange relies on this Enigma and the Flesh Track pushing with the Dragon Knight, and Kodal Blast is one of the best heroes to stop that. So this Darkseer needs to get an early pipe ASAP. And waiting to see what their last pick is going to be. There's a lot of possibilities here. Winner is banned, so... Wow, Darkseer, last pick. How does he keep on slipping through until the end of the draft? Oh, I think uh, most of the West, the, um, the Pinoy kind of teams and the Malaysian teams and whatever, they, they, the Asian teams overall, they, they don't rely on Darkseer and Bounty Hunter as much as the Western teams, just because it's a kind of a different play style. They, their supports are a lot more preoccupied in stopping the, the other team from, other offlaner from getting levels. So it, it's hard to play these heroes without really... But the thing about Darkseer is he can jungle, so it's not that scenario. Unlike Gondar or Bounty Hunter, like you said, that can't really do that. Uh, this, this lineup from Orange looks really scary right now. <laughs> they've got strong lanes, they've got lots of push with Enigma, Lashrak, DK, they've got the natural mech pipe builder with the Darkseer. Is, I guess the weak point is maybe they have some heroes that could be track kills as Myth go up for a Bounty Hunter with the last pick. But if Myth don't find them, is there really a plan B? Doesn't seem like it. So the, the Gondar pick, that was that was basically the only hero left for them to really pick at this point. The thing about Gondar is he does synergize really well with this Night Stalker pick. But so, at the same time, I feel like it plays right into Orange's hands, where this hero can't do anything to stop a push. You've got Keeper yeah. of the Light, but that's it. And, you know, he, Bounty Hunter, not really the dominant laner, when there's supports there to harass them down. And there will be for Orange, most likely. So I'm really worried about Myth. I, I feel like if they don't find like multiple track kills in that first night, they're pretty much screwed. Yeah, the, their whole lineup is going to be... This is actually really similar to how uh, LGD in the group stages went against MUFC. Orange is picking this entirely kind of... I don't want to say it's really cheesy, but it's this early push lineup. And... Let's see, Yamata is going to be playing the farming last track, like I said. It's going to be, he's going to be rushing for whatever item. It might be Bloodstone, might be BKB. Man, this is I know he a, loves the Bloodstone. Such a throwback to the International, too. They won a lot of games. They actually beat, was it Navi? I think they beat Navi with the farming last track from Yamate. It was a pretty sick performance. Yeah, and I think uh, this, this farming last track also took out COG in the, I think it was the, uh, the, the loser bracket, so. so. Uh, he, he played... Slash track throughout the group stages, and I know they love this hero. Yeah, I'm because of how, the groups. yeah, how fast he can just pu push it, like push the, the safe lane, and you can get two towers. Like the thing about this is, if this Kodal can get some levels, he can go bottom. If he can get level three in time, where he has a one in chakra and the two in illuminate, he can maybe stop, the, or. It would be hard, because he needs the early levels of Illuminate, but he also needs the Chakra. So if he does get some clarity, he can maybe stop their push. I mean, a Kodo Blast is enough to stop the push early on. Yeah, until the, both in, until the mech comes out or the heroes get tanky enough to be able to you know, heal up from that, it should be enough to slow things down. But like you said, he's got to get the levels. Will they have just abandon that offlane? Looks like Bounty Hunter's going to head down there. He doesn't have the poor man shield, so he'll be a little bit more vulnerable to harassment. Well, on that note, let's introduce the players. SD on that Bounty Hunter. We saw him a Windrunner last game in an offensive try lane. This time around, he'll be in uh, the suicide lane by himself and up against some tough stuns on the other side. Abba is the solo mid Night Stalker. I think he played the DK last game. Let's see what he can accomplish this time around. Lakels on the Luna. Bit of a different hero, like we, like you talked about in the draft. Something that Mithras don't really run normally. R5, R5 on the Vengeful Spirit with a smoke already picked up. And now Lakels gets thrown back into the trees, but not up onto the cliff. Would have been a nice little victory for them, but they don't secure it. Last but not least, we have TNK on Keeper of the Light. Meanwhile, who's on the other side? Um. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, my my scrolls. Okay, KYX is playing the Dragon Knight, and then you have Orange uh, Ice, not to be confused with Ice 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 on the Rubik. Yeah, Merlini kept on making that mistake yesterday. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. funny. You have Extinct, your famous jungler player on the Enigma, and you have Yamata on his signature Lush track, and you have WW, not their normal player actually. So, a sub. Yeah, this is. He's become their offlaner for this event. He actually did play for them at SMM, but that was when they only had two of their official players. It was Mushi, it was Extinct, plus three, basically. And uh, WW has. Perf he's acquitted himself pretty decently. We see SD point the creep way back. This is smart. He waited until he saw exactly what was going on with the lanes. He knows Enigma's in the jungle, and a level one Enigma's not that scary. So, he gets the full pull off. 
This is a nice... Oh, maybe not. He gets thrown up onto the cliff. He's got tangos, but he will be forced to use a couple of them to get out of here. And now the with that Shadow Walk, it's going to be a little more dangerous to try and do this pull. Looks like at the end it fails. Yamate pulls the creeps past the tower, so a lot of mind games and shenanigans just trying to control the creep equilibrium here in the bottom lane. Uh, the thing about this is, even though he did that, it's going to be a double pull, actually. So this... The thing about this Rubik and Flash Track lane, it's, it's hard to like completely keep him out of experience range. So this bounty hunter is going to get levels no matter what, and he's actually stuck there. <laughs> he is stuck there. He gets out. And there's a sentry ward there too, they actually thought they could go for this one. Centaur stomps all the Eidolons, the second sentry drop, he will be thrown back in. WW has joined the fight, but now ST just calmly struts out the other way. Oh man, that was... Oh, that, that is big. They, use, that, they used both sentries for that, so... I think that centaur stun saved him, because otherwise those demonic conversions would have gotten like two more follies off. It, might, it would have been closer anyway. Wow. Yeah, I think that was the best case scenario for this bounty hunter. Even though he did get caught up on that cliff, it really wasn't anything. Like, he can just tango out. If it was obviously, if it was on Dyer's, he can't really get out, but... He got the creep wave, he's... Double... double. He got a double wave at his tower, and he's gonna get level 2. Which is really what you need early on in bounty hunter, because you get the Janata and the Windwalk. It looks like Yamate is going for the one point and stun, and then maxing Edict and Lightning Storm. Uh, going for... Interesting build. He does have a lot of setup for Splitter, so it doesn't really need to level it that badly. Yeah. And this is actually really bad for Orange, because they blocked that camp for that ward too. Yeah, I was actually looking at that. Uh, it's going to be problematic for them. That was a really big mistake there by Ice. I don't know what he was doing there. He already wasted and then... I don't even know why he put the original one there, because he, he wasn't going to be able to kill the bounty in regardless, because Enigma was too far. And he wasted the other one, and he blocked both camps, basically. You know, it's one of those things where you just get a little bit excited, uh, and you go for it, it doesn't work out. But like you said, it's in the heat of the moment, these mistakes happen. But it's a costly mistake, because now Bounty Hunter is level 3, and in, th in theory, he could be level 1. They could have gotten the first blood, and then that... You know, Orange is a lineup. Once this, once this team gets some early items and momentum... They really don't look back that much. Once they start grouping up as five, it gets tricky. But if they have a slow start, that's where the Bounty hunter Night Stalker combo can get a little out of hand. It's time to look at our other lanes. KYXY in the mid lane, 14 and 2. Night Stalker, 17 and 4. Pretty even. Abba actually the slight edge in this lane. Just void spamming is actually out leveling the Dragon Knight by a bit. Uh, and that's how's the dire mid. Uh, we haven't really seen any mid pulls though. And Lakel's free farming. So even Yamate struggling a bit as far as the last hits go. Yeah, and that's just because of the the pulls. Actually, this Venge and Cold are not really pulling. They're actually just farming the camps. So, and Luna's basically getting free farm at the tower, and Luna's a lot easier to last hit with at the tower as well. So, uh, Yamata did get the double wave, and then he denied a few creeps at the tower. He didn't get that. So he's going to be down on, but their burst is what's going to be important here. So as soon as Extinct is, does have his level, his soul ring, so... This bounty is actually scouting out Extinct, but mm. he's not going to really do anything. Oh, he might be able to steal the Star Troll Warlord, though. That is a huge bounty if he can achieve it. Uh, and he actually has an Invis rune, so it's going to be a little bit easier. <laughs> oh, no, he's going to go into Extinct. Extinct's tanky. The creep, he's dropping low. This is, could be our first blood. Shrink and Toss is there. First blood from SD. Not only do they waste the two Sentry Wards and fail to kill him and block their own camp, as you can see here, but then they give away the first blood on top of it. This is what Myth Trust really needed. What a start for SD. You know, this is huge for this bounty hunter. Like, this is so big. He's already going to be level 4, like you said. And they're going to kill KYXY mid too, most likely. Wow, Venge may not be the best later, but she is a pretty good roaming ganker. And they all drop low. They actually took a lot of damage there. But they get the kill, they get out. And this is creating a lot of space. The Night Stalker, already level 6, has the bottle and the boots. Remember when we saw Night Stalker earlier? Uh, here on Beyond the Summit. It was a dual lane Night Stalker backed up by a twin headed dragon. It was forced by an offensive dual lane uh, by the enemy team mid. And so he's under level, he's under farmed. Abba is really starting to pick up the pace here. Gotta hit level 7 quickly. And Orange, they have some squishy targets early on. Oh, this is a nice ganking combo. KYXY surged in into the stun. And it's not nighttime yet. Abba doesn't have his ult anyway. He should fall to one more flame breath. There is mana for it. It's six seconds. Iron Shell burning him down. Uh, going for the stun. The safer kill. And a. Uh, Oh, just gets it. An important counter kill from Orange. Yep. So this is the thing about this. If you look at this Luna, he's actually 10 CS above this flesh track, and that's that's actually pretty significant. He now what 12 CS above, and when both heroes are farming the safe lane, you need 
your carry should be on the same farm regardless of what situation. So I don't know if Yamata is missing creeps or what, but this is actually pretty significant. He tends to us early on, it just spirals on how, and especially it's because of Luna. So yeah, look at the net worth. It's over a thousand advantage for him. I, I don't see anything on the courier or on the ground. So yeah, those last hits really stacking up. And I guess it is at least easier, easier to last hit with Luna. You've got much higher base damage. Uh, your animation's about the same, but you do have the spells with the Shrek, and it's kind of the downside of. All those creep pulling shenanigans. WW's gonna die! Another kill by SD. Although, no, this time the neutral gets the deny. So lucky there, but Orange is, you know, kind of greedy double jungle games being heavily punished by this bounty hunter. Nope. Love how this bounty hunter is playing right now. So, uh, unfortunately, he did get the neutral kill, killed him, but I'm gonna have level 6. Like I said, if this lineup if they get snowball with the with the night stalker and the bounty hunter it's unbelievably strong you have these two heroes that just run just run in your team you can't really disable them he's gonna the find another potentially extinct is malefist it's only a level two malefist just enough to get him away bounty not level six yet but getting pretty close kyxy's hasted he's chasing tnk one car passing another and now onto the bounty hunter but night stalkers joined this fight KYX, we will be able to retreat out of here. No, going back in. Now running away. Now going back in. Make up your mind, KYXY. My goodness. And now Keeper of the Light trying to steal the big stack, which actually looks like it was just finished by the Demonic Conversions. Dust was popped, thinking the BH is there. Just blindly guessing, really, and doesn't actually catch him. Yeah. This is just a chaotic. I mean, this Bounty Hunter is just playing them right now. So, the, the thing about Bounty Hunter is he gets out of control like this, where you just can't stop him if you get levels no matter what. It's extremely frustrating to play with. Right, and, so, and they're fighting yeah. without the Luna right now, too. She's just farming away in that lane, and uh, she's out farming the Lashrax. So you can't even say it's an even trade there. Yeah, I also am kind of confused, though. I mean, the Bounty Hunter is doing well distracting him, but that's a free lane bottom for him to just get experience in, and he's not really doing that. He could have been level 6 if he just stayed in the lane a little bit more. And to make it almost worse, he's not pressuring the tower either. That's the weakness of the offlane bounty. He can't stop pushes. Orange could group up bottom and go. They haven't done the pull to get that double stack, double stacked wave that really accelerates your push. Extinct's level six. He's got the soul ring of the boots. Uh, Rubik's even level four with boots. They have a sentry ward. I'm not sure what they're waiting for, but they're giving a lot. They're really not punishing SD's jungle ganking. And, and Luna can technically solo push this now. I mean, they they do want they sh they should push the top lane soon. I don't. But there's yeah, they're gonna single pull this. Or they might double pull, I don't know yet. It's hard to or say with this Keeper of the Light. <laughs> yeah, they might just stack it over. Keeper of the Light's going to get a lot of levels off this stack. Yeah, we're going to see him getting a pretty early something, whether it's that mech. Bounty Hunter might go down bottom. Oh, finally, they're going to find him. This Sentry Ward well placed. There's the Split Earth to follow up. Now the Edict doing good damage, and the Lightning SD will drop. Edict does affect invisible units. Luna comes in, drops a Lucent Beam. Wow, look at the damage it does. One Lucent Beam maxed out. Yamate loses half his HP. Yamate is on 1800 gold, and they do force the Luna to TP. I feel like maybe that's a bit of an overreaction from her. Yeah. And also, with this Tranquil Boots and the drums, when when Bounty Hunter gets level 6 in track, this Luna is going to be running extremely fast. It's the race car build. He's actually playing really cocky right now. Yeah, I, I don't know about this. And even going to be Black Cold for his trouble. Shrink and Toss cancels it. There's Eclipse, but no time to cast it. And he'll drop. I think that should have been really obvious. I mean, this... This uh, Rubik and Leshrac can technically solo kill him. And here but comes he's Zaba. Sick. He's on the hunt again. It's nighttime. Sure, the Luna's dead, but they still got the Night Stalker and the track from the Bounty Hunter. Oh, no, he's still not level 6. He's level 5. That death to lighten it. And that first nighttime off to really a slow start. It's already 10 minutes in. We haven't seen Abba leave the lane really at all. He does a phase boots and bottle. Now chasing KYXY. There's the stun, though. KYXY out of mana, and in comes the Bounty Hunter from the backside. There's no track, but they should be able to get this kill. There's no Black Hole. Abba going in. Abba running out. Bounty trapped on a cliff. Has no way out of here. He's in a lot of trouble. Lakellis has the ult. He'll drop it at the wrong time. He runs uphill without vision. Oh, big blunder by Lakellis. Now Yamate being chased down. Night Stalker on the back lines. Picks off the Dragon Egg retreating, and Yamate next in line. He's got a juke. He's got to hit an amazing Split Earth, or be surged away. WW throw himself in front of the bullets trying to keep him alive. Lakelge just runs around the barrier onto X, diving the tower. This is what Night Stalker wants. 
boy, they'd love to have some tracks here, but they don't. Extinct jukes away. He'll survive. Luna dropping low. Now the nukes just to discourage the chase from Darkseid. Will they surge DK and look to fight this? They won't. They back off. I can't believe there weren't like four more deaths in that fight, but somehow only a handful fall. There's actually a lot of misplays in this. I don't know. I mean, uh, when that Darkseer went up and he got Lucent beat, if Lightstalker just turned around and used his nuke on him, he would have died there, but he kind of hesitated. And there were plenty of scenarios where this Bounty Hunter could have died there as well. Dragonite actually, he had, he actually, if he made it Intel Treads, he would have had mana to flame, uh, breathe fire, the Bounty Hunter, but this Bounty Hunter lived in that when he was getting caught there, so. Yeah, a lot of mistakes there from both teams, and well, they do have track up now. The Eclipse is down, but is this is the power of that Luna. Do they have any points in the R? They do. I like this from R5, R5. Is maxing the missile, which makes sense because they do have a pretty strong burst damage ganking build, but getting a single point of Vengeance Sorrow along with Luna having three in the Lunar Blessing, it makes that pushing easy. And Myth Trust starting to gain a bit of momentum, and where is the trade from Orange? Right now, they get the Tier 1 mid, so that falls, and I guess it's something, but I still feel like this is... Developing into a game where Myth are playing with a lot of confidence. I guess what Orange wanted to do is when they get level 6 and Soul Ring on this Enigma, they'd push their safe lane. But this Bounty Hunter actually did, denied, I think, a level, a minute or so off Enigma farm. And he got the level 6 uh, by, I think, 9 minutes, 8 minutes or so instead of his usual 7. So that actually kind of, obviously, it stopped the push. Right. And they haven't really pushed that safe lane. I mean, you'd think a less track and Enigma lane would be uh, all the way down, like two towers, especially because his Venge and Kotal oh, were yeah. being really greedy with the stacks. Like, the Venge and Kotal weren't, weren't even, like, they were not even keeping the Shredder lane. And Xerxes was just jungling. And Bounty wasn't even in the lane. Most of the time, he's in the enemy jungle. And, you know, like you pointed out, the Enigma and the Darkseer both died once. But in spite of that, they still had an opportunity there for a while where they could have pushed. And, you know, it's what we were talking about. Are they going to punish? That offlane bounty with a push of the safe lane, and they haven't so far. And now if they want to, it's much harder, because Keep of the Light's level 6. Trick and Toss stolen by Ice, but not too big of a deal. I'm not sure Orange, have, it's re they're really struggling to find their footing in this game. As far I as think about goes, this. It's yeah. they're actually leading, but it just doesn't feel like they have any momentum right now. The thing about this is... Like, what they can hope for is this Enigma is gonna have a mech sometime soon. He has his headdress, he's gonna have his buckler, he actually has the buckler right now. And he just needs the recipe. So even if they have this kind of advantage, if we're gonna see what LGD, what happened in the LGD versus MUFC game, where there's just gonna be this one timing where this Enigma gets a mech, this last track has his bloodstone, and this Dragon Knight is gonna have whatever item. He's, a, he's going for the pipe, I think. So they're gonna have their core items, and when they get this, even though they have a Odo, a Night Stalker, etc., a Bounty and a Luna, they're not gonna be able to stop this push, and if this if this push snowballs out of control, it's going to be quite devastating. Well, BKB Luna could be a little bit scary. You do have Black Wolf trying to deal with that. It's coming up soon. She's already picking that up. Other items on the way. Looks like TNK's got the mech soon. Night Stalker rushing to BKB as well. And sure, there's Black Hole, but there's a lot of ways to deal with that. Swap is online. Level 1 swap, not really that reliable. But once she hits 11, it will be. And without one... You know, I think to some extent Myth can just face rush Orange. They can't really stand there and deal with the Siege, but if they have the BKBs, unless there's a big black hole, they can just run it with the BKBs and Orange don't have much physical damage. And if KYXY goes for the pipe like he suggested, that compounds the issue. This team very vulnerable to BKB uh, to a BKB face rush style from Myth, and I think that's what they're going for. So I think this is a really smart adjustment by Myth. Yeah, I think BKBs obviously is what they needed for this game. Thing about this about the BKBs obviously is you have the BKB, but there's also there's also all these summons and you have the edict, you have all this physical damage. So even if you do have the BKBs, they need to hit in a scenario where they're they're gonna have to catch Orange off guard, which is obvious. Orange doesn't have that many disables. They like does they do have the stuns, but they don't have like the range disables. They only have a Rubik stun yeah. and they have Enigma stun. They don't and have, they have many, the instant, stun. many instant yeah, yeah. reliable stuns. And the same can be said, obviously, for Myth. They don't, Myth doesn't really need that because they have this face roll kind of lineup with the, the Night Stalker and the Luna and the, the Bounty Hunter. You know, in spite of that good start SD had, I don't know that we've seen a single track kill this game. And it's actually shocking to me. It's something I think Myth have to start looking for. But now it gets harder to find those track kills. Orange grouped up top. Do they have that mech? Uh, no, but they have a completed Bloodstone on Yamate. 
On the other side, he's actually dead even with the Luna. Luna, the BKB, I think is coming very soon. Is there a recipe on the courier? No, there's not. So a little bit of ways off, actually, but getting pretty close to that. And the Illuminate spam, it's slowing down the push, but even without the mech, it can't stop the heroes fully. Orange get one tower to their name. They've already got the other two, so now all the tier ones fall. Meanwhile, they've defended all but one of theirs. And Myth, we'll see if they can find the trades, because that push is starting to group up. I think Enigma has the neck now. He does. And will Orange back off? Actually going for a drum, so DK not rushing that fight. The thing about this, um, is Luna, I feel if... He made a huge mistake just keeping bottom and dying like he would have been so so much more farmed than the last track. Just stayed top. I mean he already has uh he's really close to his BKB and if he just stayed top he would have had his BKB now and they would have been able to push top. If you look at both teams or if you look at both uh Mitch team, they haven't pushed the safe lane tower. Which you would think if you have a Luna and Avenge, you would push their safe lane tower earlier, but right. they didn't. And, and like you said, it goes back to that TP, which even at the time did seem like an overreaction by the Luna. Luna is not normally a great, and she has a great counter gank. Her heroes are like under the tower, but that wasn't the case. She TP'd in that was, you know, had to run a decent way before she actually got to the engagement. It it was a lot of wasted opportunity, and then he died afterwards. So not only that, not only the the cost of the death, but you know the TP and the time that wasn't spent farming as well. It set her back. In spite of that, she's still farming pretty well, and I think. Uh, the Mithril Hammer is on the way. The BKB still have to get the recipe. I'm wondering, for Orange, they have the mech. Do they get more aggressive now, or are they just going to sit back, try and farm, and, and wait until they have more items, like the pipe, maybe a BKB on the Dragon Knight? Yeah, and this... Comparing the Dark Seer's farm to the Honey Hunter, it's actually... Well, let me check the net worth. It's actually... I mean, it's only close to it. I, th I think it's because the Dark Seer didn't have any jungle... I mean... If they didn't block their own camps, the Stark would have two neutrals to farm. He'd be a lot more farmed, but he had to stay top. So that was a huge misplay, like I said, from Ice. So he should be a lot more farmed, because he would have been had, what, I think, both the jungle camps there, but both obviously were blocked. In spite of that, he's actually ahead of the bounty. Now, most of that probably is tower gold, but hey, he's ahead one way or another. Yeah, this bounty is actually extremely poor. He only has, what, 700 HP? Yeah. And he doesn't have his Ogre Axe, and... He's not really building towards the BKB yet. Or he's probably going to have to build to it, but he doesn't have a Vlad's, he doesn't have a Drums, he doesn't have a Phase. He has no real core items. And that's because the only kill and the only assist he really got was without track. So. Yeah, it's like every single opening he had was right... He was sitting right next to level 5 forever. That's unfortunate. R5, R5 plays as a lane ward, but there was already a sentry there. Oh, sometimes you'll take that as a support. KYXY with the Drums up. Uh, we'll see what he goes for. Shadow Blade is... It's the Pidoy style. I don't know what Orange normally go for their DK. It doesn't really fit as much with their lineup, which is more about grouping up and pushing, but we'll see what KOX way goes for. It could be a BKB, could be a pipe, uh, but Shadow Blade always that, you know, plan C for the Dragon Knight players. He didn't rush it though, so probably not going to be the case. Both teams content to sit back and farm Luna, getting that BKB soon. Mech up on TNK, so both teams starting to get their items up. There are a few very poor heroes. Rubik and Venge very poor. Venge getting a decent number of levels, though, and that's something else to check. She's a very... Oh, while well, that was happening, Bounty Hunter gets picked off. A nice Sentry Ward placed by Ice Ice. Or by Ice, not Ice Ice Ice. Like you said, two different players. But yes. That's gonna hurt Bounty's farm even more. He's so poor. He's, yep, he's extreme. That's the thing about Bounty Hunter. He's not really a team fight hero. So you have this kind of scenario with the Night Stalker and the Bounty Hunter and the other heroes, but... You, you'd think you'd kind of want a team fight with that lineup too, but he can't oh, really. Oh, here comes the BKB and the Eclipse, but the beams not cooperating, hitting a lot of creeps there. A little bit unlucky. Eclipse wasn't stolen. It was. Hero Rubik comes in, unloads an Eclipse of his own. He's ruining them. Ice is doing insane damage. Wow, that was a big Eclipse to steal. And in spite of that, Orange almost lose three or four heroes. Imagine if they'd had that bounty hunter at the, when the fight started. Look at all these delicious track kills just calmly walking home. Oh boy, that's painful. I have no idea what Myth is doing. This is really awful. Oh, he awful actually, that... he stole Lucid Beam. It looks like Eclipse, though. Yeah. Yeah, but this is an awful fight. It's... I have no idea what Myth was doing. Uh, this Luna just randomly ran in and then eclipsed the... He got, like, most of the creep wave, actually. I think he eclipsed, like, two Eidolons and then a creep. But he didn't really get anyone. There was no Disable. There was no Venge Stone on anyone he was trying to eclipse. And then randomly Night Stalker came in and got caught in the black hole with the with the bounty hunter. I mean, with the vengeful spirit, so they couldn't really cancel the black hole, and his Lucent Beam was on cooldown. So it was just, I have no idea 
I don't think Myth had to force that. They don't. They they can just sit back and they don't have to force. Like they're gonna win this late game if they can just hold on because of how strong Luna gets, and so does Night Stalker and the Bounty Hunter. I mean, eventually Bounty Hunter is gonna get some track kills no matter what, and they just kind of forced it. So. Well, they're sitting back and farming now. It was actually a Vanguard the Darks here went for. Pretty surprising completed. I think the pipe would be a lot more useful. But it's actually DK going for the pipe. He's got the Hood of Defiance up. He'll get the recipe for that pipe soon. Uh, and he's pretty much already got it completed. Myth, a bunch of air smoked up top, looking to push this tower. And despite a bad engaged top and things not going their way, they want to push now. That second night time well underway. And it looks like this will be challenged by Orange. DK's going to TP in first. Doesn't quite have the pipe, but he's got the recipe ready to go. He gets tracked. And then Myth back off, Keeper of the Light spamming that Illuminate. But I don't think they really want to engage into this tower, and they will back off. Yep. And Luna goes back to farming bottom. He's going to be going for the Manta most likely next. Or he might going, be going for the Yasha into the Butterfly. I have no idea. He, may, he might just even rush a Butterfly because they have so much AoE spam on Orange's side. The thing about going Butterfly is obviously they have a Darkseer as well. So Darkseer, pretty good hero versus items that get stats. Yeah, he's only got the level 1 wall. He's a bit under level. 22 minutes in, you really should be level 11 at the least, and if not 12 or more. And it just goes to show that Bounty Hunter, he did have an impact on slowing down the Darks here and the Enigma. But they're starting to catch up. Enigma's got the Ogre Club. The BKB's coming soon. And there's there's only really Swap to deal with that Black Hole. There's uh, It could be a concern later on if he hits that big Black Hole. And for Myth, hopefully they just kind of avoid that 5v5. But Archer trying to force the issue here. Radiance this is the strength of their lineup, and Ianchel's on everyone. Yamate, a BKB of his own coming soon. It's going to be a pipe and BKBs, and that's going to be that point. Once the DK BKB is up, Lashrak has his... Uh, or the pipe is up, rather. Lashrak has his BKB, and the Enigma has his. That's when they're really going to try to force these fights. That'll probably be uh, when their lineup is the strongest this game. And this is the power of Kotal. I wonder why it's one regard as probably one of the best support heroes in the game right now. In the Asian scene, you can just endless. You can just stop these pushes, and they need this pipe. I think that was a huge mistake there by Orange. I don't know why they're trying to push without the pipe. This DK is actually really close to it, they, but they kind of force. I think he's actually got it. But and looking at top top, if this bounty hunter is getting caught or going on the Enigma, but yeah, Enigma is going to be fine. Yep, he was surged away, tracked up, and able to survive. It was a nice mech usage there as well, uh, ensuring his survival. Yeah, he's got it. I'm not sure why he's not buying it yet. And Night Stalker. Uh, both, I, I don't know, I, I feel you have this kind of lineup. You need to more, be more aggressive with the heroes. Right, when, they're, they're, when they're separated, the like we see now. Lakels wants to go on KYXY. You can't kill this with Eclipse because he's got that hood. Pretty sure there's no chance, but Night Stalker's coming in. The physical damage is what's really going to bring him down. There's a TP on the Courier, BKB from Lakels. Oh, and Eclipse gets dropped with the Night Stalker here. It's almost enough. Darkseer surging himself in, then maybe hoping to surge him out, and the Courier falls. The Glaive's bouncing from hero to Courier. That one's gonna hurt. I don't know what KOX was doing. He actually had enough gold to buy his pipe there, too. He had it for was a it, while. Was it on the chicken? Was it on the chicken, actually? No, there was only TP. He had it for a while. He had it for a good two minutes. That's actually something we see from Mushi is he loves to hold on to his gold, but when you're going for pipe, you buy it as soon as you can. And, and he didn't even micro the Courier, like... The Courier was actually getting hit by the Glaives because it was right next to his hero. Yep. So that was a huge misplay there. And they're going to get the stack, and that's actually pretty big. I mean, Luna, he has his Yasha. He's probably going to be going for the Manta. So this is helping a lot. He basically got 1k gold off just the stack. I think it was stacked three to four times. I'm not sure. Yeah, she got quite a bit of farm. She's got the Yasha up, like you said, and up oh, just a Bracer on the Courier. So it's a little ways off the Manta. But it's getting pretty close, and it, it'll be a nice thing to have. You can remove Malefice with that, and obviously just... The main thing you get it for is it's just the illusions themselves. Just do so much damage with teamfights and make it so easy to push. And also, uh, accordingly, really hard to defend because those illusion glaives do bounce through. We've seen it a lot. When If Luna gets on top of your tower and the illusions are there, even the support's trying to stand near the tower, they often lose half their health or more to that. And Night Stalker actually has his BKB as well right now. So that's going to be pretty big, two BKBs in a fight. But they, if you look at Enigma, how close is he to his BKB? I, I think it might be on a chicken. I'm not sure. Uh, but he had this in the last fight. So I think, he has his, I think he has his Mithril Hammer, and he just needs the recipe. So he's around 1k from his BKB. So that's going to be pretty big, except they do have Avenge. So 
They need to try and find a way to disable his advantage from actually using swap on him. Ogre Club picked up a KYXY. It looks like he's going for a BKB now. I'm al I'm almost positive that there wasn't a pipe on the curve. I only saw a TP when I checked it. No, it definitely wasn't. Don't so he's he's skipping the pipe, and that's going to be trouble against Eclipse and Keeper of the Light Illuminate. I'm not sure about this. I feel they need that pipe, but he does also kind of need a BKB, so it's a rock and a hard place for him. Abba's Invis, he's heading top. And then just scouting things out for the moment. Yeah. Oh, they might they might find some openings here. Ice is real squishy. Yeah, he's gonna be food most likely to drop. There's a TP in from Dragon Knight. Nope. Silence. Just in the nick of time. But while this is happening, we see Keeper of the Light re recalling someone to bottom lane. And again, this is Myth Trust's comfort zone. It's different heroes for them, but they would much rather just take it late, win via farm, win via map control, than actually try to group up in 5v5. Even if they had the team fight lineup, which they don't. That's just not really their style. I mean, you have this kind of scenario right now where their Myth had the potential to be aggressive late game, early game with the Night Stalker and the Bounty Hunter, but they chose kind of to play a passive style waiting for Luna to farm. So in this scenario, they need to try, since they didn't really capitalize on the early aggressiveness, early aggression of like both these kind of two heroes, they need to, they're going to try and hunt to defend top, but they, I have no idea. I mean, you can just run in and just, Go into the fight. They don't have a BKB on this Enigma. Okay, let's see who's TPing in. It's Stalker TPs in. Yeah, he TPs into a stun from Lashrak. This is a tanky Lashrak who has a BKB of his own. Venge immediately brought down. There's your counter to the black hole. Well, like you said, no BKB, so never mind that. But they get the one kill. Can they really go high ground off of this? It's only a support Venge. It's not a huge loss. Uh, the tower was claimed by Lashrak, so he gets a little bit more gold. And this should be the BKB on the Enigma any moment now. Courier, actually nothing on it. Is he really still not farmed it yet? Does he even have the... I don't see a Mithril Hammer. Is he that far behind? I can't believe it, but I guess maybe he is. SD dropping to the split earth. He'll get picked off. And then comes the Eclipse. It's a backstab from Lakels. It's an ambush. And yes, Eclipse does still go off even while you're stunned. That black hole did nothing. Disaster for Extinct. These chaotic team fights exactly what Myth Trust were hoping for. That's where they excel. Splitting you up from the herd and then pick you off one by one. Yamate will stun there. He's got a BKB. He'll be BKB and TP out, but that's still a precious 10 second BKB charge down the drain. Sloppy fights. Definitely going to favor Myth, and that's exactly what we got. I feel both teams are making a lot of mistakes. I don't know, maybe oh, the yeah. communication errors or something, but first it started off with my Night Sacker just randomly TPing in, even after the tower was dead. Like, he TPed as soon as the tower was dying, and obviously they weren't going to defend, and then Venge swapped his swapped himself to sacrifice. Uh, sac so he could sacrifice himself for the Night Stalker. And then I have there's a random fight there, and he just got BKB'd. And if you look at Orange's lineup, they don't have any DPS if the other team has BKB. Most of their damage is actually magic damage, or physical in terms of the edict that's it yeah they, and, they have none and especially because dragon knight hasn't gone for damage you went for utility with the drums and then tankiness with the hood it hasn't really completed that for his team because he doesn't have the pipe and doesn't have the damage and now he's going for bkb so even after this bkb he needs probably two items before, at least one big dps item before he's going to even start to do anything to myth and by the time that happens well, what's Luna going to have? Probably that Butterfly, uh, as we see the Manta style is now complete. And Night Stalker, he might get a Basher. Oh, Night Stalker should get caught mid, though. There's your Dragon Tail. Do they really have to follow up to bring him down with the BKB? He's just going to start to walk away rather slowly at that. But nonetheless, he'll escape. And just the lack of physical DPS really costing Orange. The carry Lashrak normally so strong if you get going early because then you just knock down all the enemy towers. But there's still two tier two, tier two standing, which honestly, 30 minutes in, is pretty good, especially when you consider there was an awfully bounty. So really, RNG Sports in a tough spot right now. Yep, and I think it was a huge mistake for him to go pipe um, a hood if he's not going to go for the pipe. I mean, was he planning on the Darkseer? Darkseer is actually heading going for the pipe right now. Yeah, if you if you just, so he could have could have just got a cloak if that's what you want. I don't even. I th I think he could just want a BKB. Like he just needs he needs damage. He's their he's going to be their main late game damage, and he has. No semblance of what Mjolnir. He obviously doesn't need a Mjolnir, but no Crystallis, no, no or no nothing. Lothars, nothing. No armlet, no. I mean, not even life steal. It's just nothing for him. They're gonna smoke up on the side of Myth. They run right up the hill. Ice is about to be caught out. 
The track should come. Here comes Abba. There is no BKB still on the Enigma. The first one to fall will be Darkseer. On the other side of the fight, it's the Bounty Hunter getting thrown backwards, but I think Mithras, Mithras could just dive this. They will. Ice, loose and beamed up. Now Shurika tossed down. That was two track kills, and Mithrust, it's the face rush lineup. If you're not grouped up, they're just going to bull rush you, overwhelm you, and pick you off. And this is looking to be real problematic for Orange. Yeah, this is definitely not the same Orange we saw at G1. They're, I, haven't, I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of what happened in their WCG performance as well, which is quite quite bad according to them so uh, they're just like there's no communication at all I mean their whole strategy was just pushing early with these items but they never actually went and pushed they tried pushing top but didn't have a pipe so they got one tower and that that was it it, it just it, like it just feels like a very discombobulated game for them they just they have no they it, it, it was a lineup which seemed to have a clear strategy but there was no clear execution of that strategy Along the lines of what you're saying, and, you know, it's almost like they're, I don't want to say they're gifting this game to Myth, but they're making it so easy for them, and we've seen, we've seen some really decent games from Orange earlier in this tournament, so it's like this game, they just came out, and they were flat so far. They do have Darkseer Enigma, so maybe if we see a huge black hole wall when Myth tries to push, they could turn this thing around, and, you know, if it goes really late Dragon Knight, it's a pretty decent late game carry, but, you know, he doesn't have the R stacks back him up, it's... It's going to be real hard to come back from this. And I say come back, they're about even with gold, but you got to look past the, the raw numbers and just see the hero composition of this game. But then Yamata does have a lot of Bloodstone charges, and they have level 16 DK. So they are still going to get these towers. And their lead, they there is no goal lead, even though those is extremely far. I wonder how... Yeah, he has his butterfly soon. Once he gets his butterfly, if they don't have an... M they don't have a sheep stick or they don't get a disable on him. It's uh oh, double BKBs. They're charging in. They want KYXY. Where's the Eclipse? There it flies. Yamate BKBs. It's not hitting the squishy supports. They got away safely. A really questionable fight for Myth. They tried to rush in, but they didn't really get there close enough. And now it's running the other way. A really nice blindy light there driving everyone back. They're trying to escape. The chase comes on. They know Eclipse is down. They know the BKBs are down. They have Black Hole, but Orange content to back off. Amazingly, Pretty much every BKB in the game used a lot of spells as well, and nobody dies. I think Orange are going to be real happy with that. No, actually, um, the Bounty Hunter died in that fight, and then he bought back. So uh. that was a, that was actually pretty... And if you look at Ruby, he actually stole Track, which is probably the best spell to steal in this game right now. Oh, it's level 2 as well. Uh, yeah, so... If he can get a... He can just keep the spell on. If he doesn't die, if he can get a few Track kills on this fight, they can actually snowball back. And Leshek is pretty farmed. I mean, he's going to have the sheep sometime soon. And once they do get the sheep, if they can get the sheep off before Luna gets his BKB off, it is magic damage. So it doesn't really get a, it doesn't get affected obviously by butterfly. So they can, if they can burst him down before he gets the BKB off, that's huge. And he's going to be their main physical DPS. Venge just the one thing that bothers me with, with the with the way Myth seem to be playing these fights is Venge just doesn't seem to be in the right spot. She's like always in the front of the fight. She's level eleven. I'd rather see her. I, I mean, you understand why she wants to swap someone into her team, but. They're not quite there. She's a little bit too far out. So either it's her not being on the same page with them or, or them just not being on the same page with her. But a little bit of communication issues on the Myth Trust side. Uh, and also if she dies, that means a decent chunk of their damage does go away. The Vengeance Sorrow, and more importantly, the Wave of Terror if it isn't affecting heroes or hasn't been used yet. So we'll see. But Myth not really finding the pickoffs themselves either. And that makes it harder to fight into Arge's ball of doom. Yep. <laughs> uh, I, both teams actually haven't really utilized smoke. I think Orange used it a few times, but you think with um, Mitt's lineup with the Night Stalker and etc., they'd use more smokes. Also with the Venge, but both yeah, both teams really haven't done it. So I wish I wish that Myth, especially if they can get a few track kills off, and they can get just a little bit more farm on the other supports and this Bounty Hunter. If he can get a BKB, which he's really far away from, he's a one four three. He just has a drums. He's actually buying a chainmail, so. Yeah, picks up the chainmail. I guess maybe a medallion for him. It will help yeah. against Dragon Knight, and there's also a mech on the field. Uh, it's just possibly very, a blade mail. Not sure. It's very late to pick one up. I mean, he's so poor. I guess you know, just a casual chainmail. <laughs> Why not? It's a reasonably cost-effective item. He does have the inventory slot. Myth bought a gem. I'm not sure what they're planning to use it for. I guess dewarding. Uh, has it been ferried out yet? It has not. And now the push groups up mid. Orange BKB up on KYXY. That fight really helped him with farm. Luna is still 6k gold ahead of him. 
But there is the there is still Shrek as well, and now he's here, Keeper of the Light, summoning uh, just another Illuminate, clearing out the creep wave. It's still hard to push against her. Meanwhile, Luna pressuring that top lane, or him rather, and we'll back off. Yeah. I think I, th I do think um, Myth should try and slip push more, especially with this Cold Illuminate. I wish Luna was in more lane pushing them out, but he's farming the jungle right now, and he's actually getting more and more farms. Speaking of that Kotal, he's got a Hex. He's got an ultimate orb and 3,500 gold. This is the power of that support Kotal. Not only does he stop your push down its tracks, but he farms like an absolute beast. Compare that to the Rubik or the Venge. They have, what is it, 3 and 4k gold net worth, respectively. That's, That's actually insane. I think this Venge is buying every single set of OBS. And, and smokes, whatever. too. Double smoke. I think Bounty, I think bounty Internet even might be helping buy some stuff. I don't know. It kind of makes sense because they're they're not getting track kills, so then you're gonna get you know Keeper of the Light's gonna outfarm the bounty because he's actually good at farming bounties, not. It's... And also keep in mind, Mana Leak is a, a, quite a good spell versus Lush Track. As soon as that BKB runs out, you just cast it on him, and if he moves around, he's gonna lose all his mana. That's his mana is his main DPS. I like this. They're baiting out Lakels. They know he's got the Aegis, and look at the creep wave just melting while he focuses the tower. The illusions did die. The magic damage bringing them down quickly, but. The tower looks to fall soon. They're thinking about stunning Lakels. No, they're just going to back off. Let the tower go. The deny. What a deny by Yamate. Alley oop for him. Excellent deny there. And the thing about this is they need the sheep. They need to let Yamate get their next few creep waves and get the sheep out. And they can hopefully, once they get the sheep, maybe smoke gang somewhere. That's something that we talked about them kind of lacking. You know, with the Dragonite not going for Shadow Blade, Rubik's generally not going to be the hero in the front of the ganks, unless you know it's just an isolated enemy by himself. So then you need that instant stun before the BKBs come out, and with that Hex, they'll have an opening. So too will Myth Trust. They have the Hex already complete on Keeper of the Light. Farming the enemy jungle, Orange are terrified of a smoke gank, and just sitting in their base. I mean... Uh... I, I, I do think they should like, they should just try and go. They, there's no way that Myth can just totally kill them. And they need to get this farm on the Seek, on the Dragon Knight and the Lushrak. The, Lush, the Enigma has his BKB, so he technically doesn't need that many more items. He just needs a blink right now. Possibly, if it's going to go late, late game, a refresher is quite good. Even a Lincoln's. Lincoln's is really good versus Venge. <laughs> yeah, that's looking a long way off, though. Like, the rate he's farming, yeah. I mean, that could be, like, the 60-minute mark before he gets it. But we'll see. Uh, speaking of other heroes we haven't looked at in a while, there's a pipe up on the darks here, finally. Uh, did DK really sell his hood? Yeah. It, that's he so that kind inefficient. Of a... oh, well, man. I think the problem is he's... he Originally, I think he was going to go with the pipe, and then he didn't buy it, and then he's like, okay, I need a BKB, actually, because they have all these disables, and they have Luna, they have... Venge, they have Venge done, they have like Bounty Hunter obviously. So he had to sell that, and I mean, it's not going to be efficient when you have. And Dragonite's main source of damage is when he gets level 16 and he has a BKB, and he's just right clicking supports. So he needs the damage. So a hood really wouldn't help him that much. Yeah, it's just, it's unfortunate because, I mean, maybe the plan was for him to build a hood and then the way the game to, uh, to build the pipe really quickly, fast on the Dark Seer could farm it. If that was the case, it makes sense, but the way it works out, you're losing, what is it, about a thousand gold? It's a pretty yeah. significant loss. He'd have his Assault Curass without that. Well, it was it was just probably, probably a miscommunication between the team. I mean, both teams are yeah. playing with a lot of error right now. Like, like you said, uh, you know, the communication just hasn't, hasn't been as polished as what we've seen for them in other uh, other events. I mean, uh, for Myth Trust, too, I've seen them play a lot better than this as well uh, in some other events so uh, you know it's also possible I don't know maybe the venue is really loud there's a lot of factors you just can't tell as you know, someone casting remotely uh, it, it may not be entirely the team's fault you know commentators uh, I know in a lot of these Asian lands you have especially in China but also in Southeast Asia there's you can hear the commentators clearly even loudly and sure maybe they're not giving away what's going on in the game but it's still distracting so stuff like that could be a factor as well yeah. Still, we expect better from these teams. Luna's illusion is just basically solo pushing top. He got the top tower up. And he's going to be going for the Satanic, obviously most likely next. And that's going to be... it's going to be really hard to keep him down. The tower's going to drop soon. KYXY has the BKB. Night Stalker runs in. That was a brilliant vacuum into a black hole, but an even better swap by R5R5. 
Uh, it's hard to tell who's winning the fight. Luna's running from the Dragonite, not doing any damage. You can have all the items in the world, but if you're just running away, you're doing nothing. Abba getting chased down the gem on the floor. When it's all said and done, buyback from the Night Stalker. Revenge did take a fall, but they may find some track kills. There's no ultimate from the Enigma anymore. That was already used. KYX way being searched away. There's a Lucent Beam. He'll fall to that. That was a track kill, even though they traded because they're getting track kills. Should be a decent trade. Also, uh, a gem was lost earlier in that fight. DK will buy back. Now the chase continues. Ice going to throw him up onto the tower, but doesn't matter. Maybe it does. Bounty's here, but he doesn't do anything. He doesn't have much damage yet. They back off. A nice telekinesis, and they don't have a way to get him out of here besides a TP. Well, actually, no, they do. Keeper of the Light can recall him. And that's the problem with Venge when you're playing Enigma. That was a perfect black hole, and then boom, there was a Venge swap out of nowhere. Great positioning so. from R5R5. Yeah, and I, I, I do feel that Luna should try and buy her helm, uh, Satanic ASAP. Yeah, she she went for the reaver first, so she's gonna get that soon. Uh, the problem is, even after, she, even though she she came in, she got stunned. I felt if Orange somehow burst her down before she got her BKB off, they would have won that fight even more. But there was that mis, uh, there was a black hole, a dark sphere, and then uh, there was there was no sheep on her, so she got away. She doesn't have the life steal yet. That's the that's the one thing that helps Luna just man up in a fight is you do a ton of damage and you're able to life steal back. So. Without that, it, it does make sure she... Uh, DK's starting to hurt now. He's, you know, he's also just a high level, so he's getting a decent amount of damage just from his strength gain. And soon the Assault Caress comes out, so for Luna, I think really got to finish this Satanic. But you also have to worry about buyback, because Roshan's up, and if you lose a fight, they get the Aegis. They, or they may just take Rex directly, but either way, could be tricky. Night Stalker with the gem right now, uh, as well as Extinct, so double gems out. But Night Stalker going to be pretty happy to have this at night time. And you can't ever count out a Leshtrac late game. I think Leshtrac, when he's this farmed, he's actually a really, really strong late game hero. Just because magic, magic resistance is something late game where it's going to be constant. It's going to be 25%. Oh, they get the yeah. instant stun on the Kells. That's the Hex and a split Earth on two. What a fight for Orange. Just such a great initiate. Lakels is tanking up and surviving. He's got the Satanic. He's doing a lot of damage, but he doesn't have buyback. Can they kill him off? He gets away to safety. He'll survive. BKB is used by almost everyone. The black hole, what, which what could be the trump card, is back up. And will they back off? They will. Wow, that Satanic. If he had died there... Would have been a disaster, but gets the BKB Satanic off, is able to lifesteal and survive. And I wonder if Orange feel confident enough to rush now. They know that a lot of BKBs are on cooldown right now. That's something Myth Trust rely heavily on, but Myth, smoke and head straight towards the pit. When they find it empty, I wonder if they think about trying to ninja this. At this stage of the game, I mean, all the BKBs are basically 5 second right now. You can never go into something expecting it's going to be 5. I think, oh, what, Lesh is 5. Enigma is the only hero that really isn't 5 yet. He still has... A uh, significant amount of charges. So, this even though they're gonna fight this, they have the black hole up. That's their only counter. And Venge can't get caught. He she needs to get back right now. Yeah, she will get back right now. And they get the Aegis. That's a big pickup, especially for this Luna, who also uh, no a little bit short of buyback, but should have it very soon. That's gonna be three lives for Luna, most likely in the next fight. And she's pretty much six slotted. At this point, you could buy Boots of Travel if you lose the Aegis by one other item, but more or less, this is it, because she's going to want to save for, for buyback. She's about as big as she can get. Dragonite still has a lot of room to add items. And then it's going to come down to the other heroes for Myth. The Night Stalker, not really going for much damage. He's got, you know, phase Boots. He's just going tanky. No Basher on him. And the Bounty Hunter, desperately poor. Sometimes Bounty can be a great secondary source of damage, but he's just not getting any farm to do it. Uh, I'm mean, bounty hunters. I mean, this is the problem with bounty hunter. If he doesn't get the track kills early game, he just gets to this point where he can't really do anything. In the team fights. Maybe they can get a few track kills. But they're oh, gonna try and kill him. Oh, there's that instant hex, and he should fall to this. No way out. That hex is just finding them all these picks. On the other hand, KYX was getting caught mid. Yeah, this is a pretty big kill. That Dragonite, you definitely prefer... Will they swap him back in? Will they look to contest this fully? Darkseer has TP'd into the fight. Luna recalled. What a nice usage of recall. BKB pop from the Luna. I'm not sure if that was totally necessary. Maybe worried about the Dragon Tail. But in the end, did they even get the kill? Abbas chasing. 
His team is not fully with him. Luna's just farming the mid lane, killing off illusions. TNK, for some reason, splits from the pack. Total chaos in this fight. Myth really seemed discombobulated right now. We had Night Stalker plus one chasing that kill on the Dragonite. Luna farming mid, and then Keeper of the Light inexplicably just running away from his team. What is going on with these guys? Uh, that was... I don't know. Like, once they, once they couldn't really stop, they shouldn't have kept chasing. He's got the Aegis. Lakelis is a tough hero to focus. Remember, Black Hole is up. BKB is up. Will they use it? They try to bring Lakelis down. He pops the, the Satanic, though, so even when he comes back, BKB is on cooldown for 8 seconds. They're going to Black Hole this one. They want that pesky Luna. She can't survive very long when she's not life-stealing. Oh, it's looking real bad, this fight. Does the Luna have buyback? She does, but forcing that out will be huge. Also, uh, does, does she use the BKB in that fight? No, it is still up, no. so Myth should be able to defend this, I think, with the buyback. But Rollinger are going to be pretty happy about that, and... Well, they lose the Aegis, too. Uh, I, I, like, that was just a bad fight. Like, you can't just run up to that, especially when they have all these disables. It's because of the, the, the sheep now, especially. So she just she just got sheeped and died, and she was maybe hoping for some satanic charges, but there was no hope because of all the disable. Assault Caress is up on DK. They're trying to push this. There's a buyback from Luna. Oh, did DK run away in time? He's stunned and he is surged, but can they chase him down? Hex on the Luna. Tracks flying out left, right, and center. They chase out of WW. He should fall to this. Too much physical burst. I think he'll go down here. Maybe not. The Luna always getting telekinesed in the middle of these fights. KYXY is just so damn tanky. The minus armor no longer being on track. You can see that does have a bit of an impact, keeping the DK alive a bit longer. He's still running. Split Earth is going to miss because, of, well, actually, I don't think it's going to hit anyway. Rubik Force staffing away, but he'll get picked off, and the chase is on. What a swap. Canceling the TP. This is... It's the ping pong match of Dodo. We're seeing it again. Just one team wins a fight, they push down mid, then the other team immediately wins and counterattacks. Well, that's the problem with um, Bounty Hunter. The thing is, as soon as they bought back, as soon as Luna bought back, Orange should just ran away. Jeez. But they kind of. Yeah. She's once again just charging up the hill. If the Hex was there, I mean, you gotta be a little bit worried about dying. Apparently not. There is no black hole for 80 seconds. They know this. That's the problem with heroes like Enigma and. Tied. As soon as you know their ulties are down, they've become kind of useless heroes. So, and this can't. is it's the siege engine. It's just those glaives bouncing through. Everybody forced from it. Look at the damage Yamate's taken. That is all glaive damage. I mean, maybe a little bit of illuminate, but mostly just glaives. KYXY taking some nuke harassment. Swapped into the team. He'll BKB, but can he actually run away from Night Stalker and the track, which does go through BKB? They might lose Rax here. They haven't actually secured it yet. Luna, the first one to retreat. Wow, do they really not get Rex off of that? Black Hole's gonna be up the next fight. That was a pretty good window, but they do opt to play it safe, knowing that the Luna, as well as the Keeper of the Light and the Bounty Hunter, three heroes all having buybacks on cooldown. And it would be interesting to see if uh, this Luna maybe goes for the a new BKB. She needs a new BKB actually, because this actually in this game, I mean, three of the heroes they actually got really early BKBs: so Luna, the Night Stalker, and the Lushrak. And they all had like five charges by 30 minutes or so, just because they kept using it in like these unfortunate situations. And yeah, yeah, right. Like if if in in other games, if you either you know you used to be able to sell your BKB uh, for a lesser value and then buy a new one, but now you just have to buy a fresh one and drop the existing, which is a huge investment. Something we won't see unless this game goes like 70. I would say like you know 60, maybe 70 plus minutes and. You know, it's sometimes we see players prefer not to get the early BKB, so when you do get it, it starts with the 10 second charge later on in the game, but like you said, the charges are pretty much all down to 5, aside from the Enigma, who's still healthy, but with the Enigma, even 5 seconds is usually enough, that's one less than the duration of your black hole, so it's almost pointless that Enigma has a longer BKB charge. Yeah, and she does have a uh, blink right now. Yeah, that was something a big pickup, potentially. And they have that setup to get a huge black hole with vacuum to to initiate. The question though is, will the BKBs be there in time? Uh, Myth trust? Do they have buyback? They're going for this. They don't. Luna, no new item pickups on her. Anything else on this team? No, they're not actually going to commit. They just oh, Lacels. That was so freaking close, man. That was way closer than it looked. He almost got caught there. There was a hex just waiting. Yamate, I think might have even just been able to get it off, but perhaps a split second 
uh, from arriving there in time. That could have been a disaster. Again, Luna, no buyback. Instead, it's R5R5 R5 who gets caught. What is this game? What am I watching? R5R5 R5 gonna get picked off. Luna comes in, head full of steam, gets the Eclipse off, but Eclipse is not a big damage source at this point in the game. He's still got Satanic, but he is surrounded. He is being focused down, and he will fall. Dead for a minute, no buyback. Eclipse was stolen by Ice and goes back the other way. This time he did steal it, guys, so at least I caught one of them. Uh, and now the tower will fall mid lane. Myth Trust, in a game of throws, looks like they may be on the ropes here. I, I don't know what that was. It was just... They're like... They're, there has to be a problem with their communication or something. Because that, that was just... They just went in by one by one, and then... As soon as Avenger is dead, you can't fight when this Avenger is dead, because you know Enigma is going to black hole you. And as soon as Avenger died, Luna just randomly land, ran in into four heroes with the BKB. And the Lush, Lush Track is doing so much damage in these fights. Like, this M, this game MVP, regardless of how like everyone else is kind of not playing that well, this Lush Track is playing really well. I think Yamato actually hasn't missed any stun. Well, this he, he's so far. He's seven zero and seven. He hasn't died. He's up to twenty one. Blood stun charges. I mean, you say played well. Yeah, he's played out of his mind. I'll even go that far. Kyxy working on the tower. Now going back to fight the enemy team. Luna has returned to the fight. She is two racks down, but can this cat? Can this panther make something big happen? Picks off one. Continues to give chase. Yamate is tracked. Ice is tracked. Inside of the base, it is actually Bounty Hunter and Dragon Knight. Uh, Bounty Hunter and Night Stalker bringing down the Dragon Knight. Yamate trying to TP away. Luna, in the end, didn't catch any of the other stragglers. All of the heroes that were tracked made it to safety. They lose two lanes of Rex. Myth Trust. They got a couple of kills there, but it does feel like... How many times am I going to have to say this this game? <laughs> it feels like it's now Arja's game to lose. Problem is that Luna is one of those heroes that can just defend no matter what. So even if they are down, they can possibly hurdle this up. But the next fight, she needs to have her BKB. Like, what is she bringing to her? Oh, okay, she's not going to go for the BKB. She's going to go for the the Daedalus. The, the Daedalus. My bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it is such an expensive investment. If you want to rebuy your BKB because you can't sell it, it's it's it's, it's a lot. Sure, it's a five second BKB, but. Hey, you still have it, whereas, you know, if you buy this Chrysalis, you've got a new big damage item. But, like you said, I mean, if she gets... That's the thing for Orange. They could just black hole the Luna, and as long as there's not a Venge swap there, like if Venge gets caught or she's dead, there's really not much damage from the rest of the team because Night Stalker went tanky, Bounty Hunter is nothing. They're just 5 manny mid. This is the death push. If they die here... Oh, I just brought up on a bad time to bring up the console. KYX, my four stepped away. Abba giving chase. Three heroes back. You did to devastation into an ice eclipse and Yamate doing work. But Lakels is standing and delivering a lot of damage. There's your wall. Those Luna illusions will hurt if she gets pulled back in, and it's a black hole catching out too. They are helpless to deal with it because unfortunately the Venge is dead. That is game set match. This is a best out of one. I think it was six thousand dollars for this single game, and it will go to Orange Esports. Myth Trust had a great run of the group stages, beat Orange in the groups, but couldn't beat them when it counted with the money on the line. I, I, I don't know why they just did this. They actually could have kept turtling this game out. I mean, it's better than just running in like that. They, did, they didn't even get a rack step, so I, I don't know. I felt Myth had, this was their game to lose, considering how far this Luna got. Frustrating game, I'm sure, for them. And uh, I mean, even for Arch, it's 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 it's, it's, it's got to be hard to you know come into this game and and have. It's the format as well. I mean, between the format and just the game not really being you know either team at the top of their games, and also the fact they beat Orange in the group stages. It's like, well, we beat you once, so we're technically tied one-one. But when it was the money match, we couldn't come through, and it's got to hurt that they don't get a single cent. But hey, they finished top four in a pretty stacked. Dota 2 Asian event, so that is something to be proud of nonetheless for the Smith Trust squad. Exceptional play there by Yamato, though. So, MVP of this tournament for Orange, at least. 8 0 and 10. Mushi wasn't here, but why God shouldering the heavy load that was this game? He actually, oh, I didn't check how many Bloodstone charges he had. Damn it! <laughs> someone someone who's watching the Dota TV should let me know. Hopefully. Uh, he hopefully. had 22. 22. So. 25, actually. 25. <laughs> uh, that's not the record, I don't think, but that's. 
I mean, that's pretty amazing. When you look at Myth Trust, they had so many burst damage here. So many hairs they could pick them off. Guys, that wraps it up for our third, fourth place match. We'll take a quick look at the brackets. There's only one series left to go for the Asia. This one's the big dogs. It's LGD versus MUFC. The last time these two teams met earlier in this tournament in the first group stage match, MUFC got the better of them. Myth Trust. Sorry for them, uh, and unfortunate for, for their fans. They were not able to win the third, fourth place match. They don't get any money, but they can walk home with a lot of pride. They had a tough group, a lot of other good teams there. Orange walk home, I believe a 6,000 US dollars, so something big for them to be proud of. The grand finals are awaiting us. LGD versus MUFC, it's a best out of three. It'll be coming up right here on Beyond the Summit a little bit later today. Sam, any party words for the viewers? Um, follow me at uh, Liquid Boba at Twitter, and shout out to my sponsor. <laughs> that, liquid. that'll wrap it up guys thanks thanks for joining me sam guys stay tuned we'll have the grand finals coming up a little bit later today